What's up guys, Graham here. If you left a comment in the comment section of my crafting video that I did just a week ago, then you are entered into the giveaway of a couple of 30 day patron passes as well as a Rex giveaway. And the winners are, bam, right there. Congratulations, we will be sending your gifts to you just shortly. All right guys. Now, I always told you that the donations spur giveaways. Well, this week it is insane. Patrick that donated last week, he donated another $100. Yes, it's the same Patrick that donated $100 last week. He did another donation right afterwards and I didn't notice it because it was posted to my channel. As in, he used the contribute uh, money towards the channel link on the side of my YouTube page. That is insane that you donated $200, two $100 donations back to back like you did. Trust me, the stat optimization video that you wanted is going to be made real soon. I gotta do my research, that way I make sure that I give the correct information. But yes, we will be making it just shortly, Patrick. Thank you so much, man. And I believe this week, when it rains, it pours. I'm not real sure how to say your name, but it's Glade or Gladdy. I'm not too sure. I'm sorry if I'm messing it up. But he made back-to-back -back $100 donations himself. <laughs> Now mind you, I have never gotten a $100 donation before just recently. And within like a week's time, Patrick made back-to-back -back $100 donations and then Gladdy made back-to-back -back $100 donations as well. $100 is the highest donation I've ever gotten, so this is insane that I've gotten several of them in a row. And in his message he says, Hi mate, just have to say, love your channel, it has helped me a lot. I still suck at PvP, but not as bad as I used to. LOL. My character's name is Smashna at Wolfsbane. Yeah, I'll be adding you to my friends list if whenever you want to go do something, man. You just let me know and we're going to go do it. I also read your email that you sent to me. Thank you so much for all the support, man. I, I cannot believe that you sent that much money. And JP once again sent his $10 donation that he's been making month after month and supporting the channel. You guys, man, I do not even know what to say with the amount of support that you guys are giving me. All I can say is thank you. Thank you so much. And in appreciation for all the donations, I will be doing six of the 30 day patron pass giveaways. Yes, that means we will have six different winners winning 30 day patron passes. And also I will be doing a Rex giveaway since JP made the donation that he did. And we will make it to where if you're one of the people that have used my referral link in the description below my videos in order to make your Rift account, and you are one of the winners, you will win 10 times that amount of Rex. In order to be entered into these giveaways, all you have to do is leave a comment in the comment section below my video here and put your character name and server in the comment and also make sure that you are subscribed to the channel and hit that like button. The winners will be announced in the next weekend video. Good luck to everybody entering into the giveaway. What's up guys, today we're going to go over a Nightblade Rogue PvP guide and this is like one of the best burst builds in the game, if not the best, and it just completely annihilates people before they have any kind of time to react and it's definitely a healer killer. So I hope you guys enjoy this video and let's get right into it. All right, let's open up Soul Tree here. Now, if you would like to see this build on a web page instead of having to squint at your screen or pause the video, feel free to look in the description below this video and I will have a link to it down there and also all the macros and all the other things that you need to reference as well as the K alerts. So as you can see, we went 61 into Nightblade, 13 into Blade Dancer, which is five points into Ambidextrous, uh, five points into quick reflexes, one point into reprisal, one point into strike back, and one point into sprint. And then we went two points into Rift Stalker, which is two points into Unseen Fury. The masteries we chose is level 61, we went with Planar Replenishment, uh, mainly because there's nothing else really all that good in order to get at level 61, so we went with the heal. 
Uh, level 64, we went with Adamant Resolve because it lets you have a shorter cooldown on your Death from the Shadows, which is a very important attack with Nightblade because it's going to apply stacks of Fiery Spike to your target, which is going to be a really good dot. And with Nightblade, every Nightblade player will pretty much tell you to apply as many stacks of Fiery Spike on the opponent as possible. And this will do it for you with the uh, Death from the Shadows. So if you make it on a much shorter cooldown, you'll get more dots on your target without having to hard cast it. Alright, then we went level 63 with Boundless Energy. Now this is one that can be uh, changed around pretty easily because a lot of people will go with Sprinter's Guile for the 10% movement increase. I went with Boundless Energy because uh, one of the most important attacks that we're going to be using with Nightblade is called Dust Strike. And whenever we use it, it applies a stack of emptiness which will make it to where it hits harder but it also drains your energy quite a bit. And if you stay in melee range very long and use that attack, you're going to run out of energy, and Boundless Energy helps uh, mitigate that some. All right, so level 64, we went with Repetitive Strikes. Now, this is one that can be changed around as well because a lot of people will go with Time Focus. And Time Focus basically makes it to where after 8 seconds, uh, the damage explodes on the opponent and it does some ethereal damage onto him, which isn't mitigated and uh, It's pretty good damage, but overall I would rather have the Damage increase from repetitive strikes because it makes it to where your attacks are six percent more damage so whenever I'm playing Nightblade I usually open up and do a few attacks in order to build up my combo points and then all of a sudden I'm going into a burst that's going to try to kill them immediately and I really don't don't care to try to have an eight, uh, 8 second burst happening whenever I'm wanting that 6% extra damage to be applied to my burst macro whenever I use it shortly after opening up on the opponent. All right, so level 65, I'm actually really leaning towards planar variation because I get targeted a lot. Everybody likes to target Grim and Warfronts. Everybody likes the idea of me getting killed by their hand. And I've got to do everything I can to survive, put it that way. So I actually usually go with planar variation, but for some reason I haven't clicked on energy manipulation. Uh, just as an example for if you want more damage. But of course I'm going to go with a little bit of healing. That way I can survive a little bit more being who I am and get targeted all the time. The buffs that we'll be using is Smoldering Blades and Ebon Blades. And of course any guild or planar buffs that you want to use. Alright, let's go into the macros here. Now all the macros will be in the description below the video like I said earlier. Now one of the things that you need to keep in mind about these particular macros is I have them constructed in a certain way to make it easy for people that are learning Nightblade or want it easier on themselves because there's actually a lot better ways of running each particular ability by themselves that will increase your damage and stuff like that. But really we're trying to make it easy on people that are watching the guide in order to perform really well as Nightblade but still have room for improvement once they get comfortable and want to separate abilities. Now this will cast uh, Death from the Shadows which will apply stacks of Fiery Spike and also it'll go into the Ebon Fury Dust Strike and then uh, that's going to be your melee range attacks and then Twilight Force. Now one of the things I need to point out is a lot of people will have Ebon Fury on a separate button and what that does is it basically makes your Dust Strike not consume energy and whenever you're using dust strike it's going to eat up your energy because it applies stacks of emptiness on your character and that'll make it to where it drains your energy a lot more so whenever you pop even fury with it it's of course not going to make you have energy drain from dust strike but it only lasts for 10 seconds and it's a one minute cooldown so after that 10 seconds Dust Strike is going to have those stacks of emptiness and really eat into your energy. So you have to kind of be careful with that. And a lot of people will separate Ebb and Fury so that they can pop it once they have max stacks of emptiness. 
That way that they're not getting energy drained whenever it's draining you the most. All right. And let's go into the Builder 2 right here. Now the reason why I put a second Builder is this one actually uses Primal Strike rather than uh, the Dust Strike. And this is so if you're starting to get energy starved, you can go into this and not have as much of your energy sapped away from you. And a lot of people will spam the Dust Strike as much as possible and then go into Primal Strike and that's what we're wanting you to be able to do. All right, so let's go into the finisher here. Now this is another case of where it's comprised in a certain way to make it easier on you. Now one of the abilities that's going to add a lot of damage for you is called Scourge of Darkness. And Scourge of Darkness is something that you want up as much as possible usually. Now a lot of people do not like putting it into a finisher macro for the sake of say that you've got somebody really low and you're trying to finish them off and you're trying to fire off your finisher to put the nail in the coffin so to say well they don't want scourge of darkness to pop and that's going to apply to your next damaging abilities they would like that blazing striker flame thrust to go off instead to finish off the opponent but since it's kind of hard to micromanage so many different abilities with Nightblade, I made it easy on you guys and went in and put Scourge of Darkness in the finisher. That way that you can use it whenever it's available and it'll be up as much as possible. Alright, so now we got a soft burst here. Now what I mean by the soft burst is it's going to fire off all of your cooldowns that are 30 seconds long. So you can use it twice every minute. And it's going to use several different abilities but it's not going to be using your minute cooldown abilities that will apply even more damage so whenever you're not wanting to wait a full minute in between each burst you want to be able to use the 30 second ones and then the minute cooldown ones whenever it becomes available so this one here is built in a certain way to uh, buff up all your damage and it's also going to root your opponent and really be able to uh, lay into them whenever you fire off Dark Descent, which is going to make it to where your finishers are not going to consume your combo points. So you'll be able to spam your Flame Thrust or Blazing Strike, and it does it for the next three attacks. So, yeah, and it'll also make it to where uh, Scourge of Darkness will eat up one of those stacks if you don't have it up. But you want Scourge of Darkness up, so I put it in the macro just in case you don't have it up you want it to be available whenever you're doing your burst. All right, so this is the hard burst here. This is the one that's gonna fire off all your 30 second cooldowns as well as your minute cooldowns all in one macro. So every minute you're gonna be able to burst somebody down so hard, it's gonna be next to impossible for them to survive. The only way that they're going to be able to survive it is if they've got some kind of cross healing that somebody's fast on the response. And man, they have got to be fast because this burst is just going to eat people. It is just going to destroy them. It's insane the amount of damage that you get out of this. And if you're a geared rogue and you pop this uh, burst macro, game over man i don't care if you're a healer what you know uh, of course you shouldn't be hit tanks but you know who knows but we also have another macro here which is uh our escape macro now this is going to pop all of our escape abilities basically this is going to do blazing path which is going to remove uh, any kind of CC or anything on you and it's also going to teleport you and increase your movement speed and all that good stuff and shadow shift is also going to teleport you and then sprint is going to increase your movement speed as well so basically you're going to be teleporting twice and your movement speed is going to be increased by a hundred percent so if you get into a bad situation you can pop this escape it's going to break any cc's on you and you're going to be 30 meters away with 100 percent 100 percent run speed and getting away all right let's go into what's on my bar down here we have our first builder macro and you notice that i don't really have the second builder macro right beside it because of the fact that i use the first builder macro Primarily, I almost never use the second builder because the fights are so short in general that whenever I'm spamming my dust strike and stuff, I'm going into a burst shortly after and I'm not really going to be sticking around to uh, 
run out of energy, put it that way. But yet I do have it available just in case I need it to where I can hit the second builder macro and not be energy starved if a dom is really putting the hurt on me, so to say. All right, then we got the finisher macro. We have the uh, soft burst macro, which is gonna pop all of our 30 second cooldowns. We have our hard burst macro that is gonna pop our minute cooldowns as well as 30 second cooldowns. We have conceal, which is gonna be our stealth ability. And we have flash of steel, which is gonna be our charge. Uh, it's really good if your opponent is uh, using like a break free to get out of the route that you initially applied to them and they start trying to get away. Of course your ranged abilities with Nightblade are so good that it's going to be very hard for them to get away. But if you need to root them again, go ahead and use Flash of Steel and charge in at them. Alright, then we have Sidesteps, which is huge because Sidesteps increases your dodge by 50%. And with some of the recent changes dodging is very very good in pvp now so whenever you pop that it's going to make a huge difference and then we have the ability in blade dancer called reprisal that's part of our macros that's going to fire off every time we dodge so yeah you can imagine how many times that's going to be firing off during the duration of sidesteps all right and then we got the escape macro now I do have to say that Blazing Path is also a basically a break free. It teleports you away and increases your movement speed, but it's also a break free. So you may want to put it in a macro with your break free, uh, or else put it in both macros, whatever you like. All right, then we have Twilight Transcendence. Now what this is going to do is it's going to remove all curses, diseases, and poisons. It's going to reduce damage taken by 50% and also your damage done by 40%. And it's gonna restore 50% of your max health over four seconds. So that's gonna be a huge heal. Now, uh, mind you, it also reduces your damage done by 40%. So you do not wanna pop that if you're in the middle of your burst or anything else. Try not to put yourself in bad situations where you're all of a sudden taking a lot of damage in the middle of your burst. You want to try to time your burst at the right time to where it's going to be uh, while people are singled out, like not with um, cross healing going on, uh, if possible. And also you want to make it to where you're not going to take a lot of damage if possible. So that's going to be a huge lifesaver right there. All right, uh, then we have Fiery Spike on a separate button because normally we don't want to cast Fiery Spike as a hard cast, but... It's one of those things that it does such good damage and everything like that. And also you want to start out fights with it. That if you think that your uh, Death from the Shadows is not off a of cooldown, then you probably want to apply your Fiery Spike so that you can get a dot going and it'll also take people out of stealth. Alright, then we have Break Free on a separate button. And we have Weapon Barrage, which is our interrupt, but also if it's successful, it will also debilitate the opponent for five seconds. That is such a huge interrupt. All right, then we have Dark Containment, which it incapacitates for 15 seconds, which can also be used as an interrupt if you want, but I usually use it as an ability to uh, CC a healer off to the side while I kill the support around him. All right, then of course we have our second builder. And also we have things in the, uh, the planar tree here or should I say the ascended abilities that is very good for rogues now this one right here called cleanse soul it removes all hostile magical effects and makes the rogue immune to these effects for one second so yeah that's going to be a huge thing for your rogue it's going to be an absolute cleanse and yeah make sure that you have that on your bar as well I need to put it on my bar here all right, we're gonna start out this fight by going into stealth and we're gonna open up a dark malady. And that's of course on our first button there. And then we're gonna go into our builder number one, which is gonna be casting our dust strike, as well as twilight force, which is gonna snare our opponent. All right, so let's go ahead and go into it. And as soon as we get five combo points, we'll go ahead and hit our finisher, which is going to apply a scourge of darkness to ourselves and increase our uh, damage 
attacks. Now one of the things that you want to try to do is back off at about four combo points so that you can do a twilight force and that will snare your opponent. But once you got the combo points up, let's go into our hard burst here. And that is going to apply a lot of damage because with our initial damage that we did, we got heat retention up, which is going to increase the damage of our finishers. We got internal heat going. We've got tons of stuff going that's going to really apply a lot of damage and as you can see the burst was just insane you want to go ahead and hit that burst macro over and over again until you have no combo points at all and then you can go back into your normal rotation of builder builder finisher now after about 30 seconds after you hit your hard burst your short burst is going to be available now as you can see uh, at the bottom of my character where his feet are to the left of his feet I have where it shows the dark descent which is going to tell me whenever my soft burst is available now it gets used during the hard burst as well so anytime that pops up I know I can use that soft burst it's whenever the ability to the right of my feet pops up at as well at the same time that I know I can go into my hard burst because that's a one minute cooldown ability at the right of my character. So I know that I can go right back into my hard burst right now if I wanted to, but we're going to demonstrate the, the soft burst right now. So let's go ahead and build up combo points and we're going to get our scourge of darkness up. Go ahead and apply our combo points and mind you, we could do it at range too. You know, it'll attack at range as well. All right, so we're going to go into our soft burst here and we just spam it until we run out of combo points. And there you go. So that's our burst right there. We got a hard burst and a soft burst and both of them should be used at different opportune times. You know, uh, you might be able to finish somebody off without blowing all your one minute cooldowns uh, and you just use your 30 second cooldowns or else you might need to really let them have it if it's somebody that's getting good heals or something like that so that's basically how to play this build it, it's rather simple the way that i have it set up uh most nightblade players that have played it for a long time have it a lot more complicated and they separate all the abilities out to try to get as much dps as possible and also there's another build that a lot of people are running that does more damage than the one i'm providing to you but with less utility so you're not going to have like the interrupt that is don't going to debilitate your opponent you won't have sidesteps or any of that stuff uh most people are going with a ranger variation of nightblade that is like the top dps for even pve builds i believe so yeah Use whatever you like. I'll provide both builds in the description below, but this video is specifically about the one with uh, Blade Dancer in it and all that. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you hit that thumbs up button. And if you're new to Rift, make sure you use the referral code in the description below that will give you lots of good stuff for a new character in the game. Uh, very, very helpful stuff. Trust me. All right, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. As usual, my name is Grim, and I'll see you next time.